We're going to start with announcing some national uh, recognition for the Lincoln Fire and Rescue. Uh, LFR has once again <clears throat> earned international accredited agency status from the Commission on Fire Accreditation International. The department received this plaque. Show them the plaque, John. Uh, earlier this month at the annual conference of the Center for Public Safety Excellence. The accreditation process gives Lincoln Fire and Rescue an opportunity to review its policies and procedures and then be evaluated by peers from other agencies. Achieving accreditation assures the public that fire and ambulance services in this city are of the highest quality. The process is also an important tool to help LFR be proactive in looking at plans for improvements in the future and to review best practices. The department was one of the first five in the world to receive national accreditation back in August of 1997. To remain accredited, they go through the process every five years. So at this time, I'd like to ask Chief Huff and Battalion Chief Eric Jones to talk a little bit more about the process. Thank you, Mayor. Um, we'll certainly take questions if you have any. Uh, it's just, uh, I want to just say real quickly that uh, it's my pleasure to, uh, to introduce uh, Battalion Chief Eric Jones, who is our accreditation uh, manager for um, this project for us. And Eric has done a tremendous job of making sure that we meet all of the criteria in the accreditation process. I'm also very proud of the men and women of Lincoln Fire and Rescue who uh, do the hard work every day for us, for our citizens, to make sure that we are doing the best uh, work we can in providing emergency services. Accreditation recommend, uh, recognition is a tremendous milestone for any organization. In the fire service, uh, we happen to be one of a small number, about 160 uh, accredited fire departments in the world. And we're very proud of that fact. It's uh, something that all of our citizens can also be proud of. Uh, we do a, a, an outstanding job, and our peers that uh, are part of the accreditation uh, process uh, come in and evaluate us, and they uh, have given us that blessing. So without further ado, I'll go ahead and uh, ask Chief Jones to, to maybe share a little bit about the accreditation process. And specifically, if you have questions about the process, he would certainly be one that could answer them. Thanks, Chief. Um, I'm Battalion Chief Eric Jones. As uh, Chief Huff indicated, I'm the accreditation manager for Lincoln Fire and Rescue. Um, Lincoln Fire and Rescue, like Chief Huff said, we, is one of approximately 160 uh, accredited um, fire departments internationally. Um, we were actually one of the pilot um, agencies uh, when the accreditation process began 20 years ago. Uh, this would be our fourth time to be reaccredited. Um, it is a fairly exhaustive process. Um, there are several different types of accreditations across the country. This is definitely one of the most exhaustive. Um, the accreditation is comprised of three components. Uh, the first is our strategic plan, uh, which is a community-driven strategic plan driven by our internal customers here in the fire department, along with um, uh, external customers out in the community. Um, the second part is our self-assessment process. It's approximately 250 performance indicators that we must meet. Um, and the third and last pro part of the process is the um, standard of coverage process, which uh, the fire department, which Lincoln Fire and Rescue, um, measures risk out in the community. Um, in fact, Lincoln Fire and Rescue's um, risk analysis is one of the most comprehensive in the country. Um, the process uh, is not done just by me. Um, it's done by all of our command staff, all of our chief officers. And then we have several subject, subject matter experts on the department that assist in the process annually. So while the administration and the, and the command staff um, implement programs and policies uh, to meet these standards, it's definitely the work of our firefighters every day that, that make this achievable. And that is pretty much the process. Uh, every five years, we go through a peer assessment. Um, this year, we had four peer assessors come from across the country that um, came through and verified and validated um, our accreditation process. Um, and it is a process. It isn't a project that we work on once every five years. It's a process that we have to continually work on every day to improve. Let me make one, just one more comment before we take your questions. I want to mention the fact that Lincoln is one of only 
a few cities in the United States that has all three of our emergency services uh, accredited. The Lincoln Police Department, in addition to the fire department, the Lincoln Police Department and the Emergency Communications 911 Center uh, are accredited by the Commission on Accreditation for Law Enforcement Agencies, and that requires reaccreditation every three years. LPD has been nationally accredited since 1989, when the department became the first department in Nebraska to be accredited. And the Lincoln Emergency Communications 911 was the 14th center in the nation to be accredited back in uh, 2002. So with that, before we get into some of our improving technology, do you have questions on, on this part of the uh, communication? Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, Chief Huff told me to put this down and do a speech, but I didn't do a very good job of that. So, <laughs> it's uh, the third part is our standard of coverage document, and uh, what that is comprised of is a risk analysis, in addition to a time and on scene performance analysis. Um, it's it's uh, pretty data heavy. Uh, it's about a 550 page document, and uh, arguably one of the most comprehensive in the internationally right now. So we're, we are constantly working with other departments on how to build a, a, a standard of coverage or a risk analysis. So this happened every five years. How long does this whole process take? Well, the, the process is continual. We're, we're constantly um, evaluating uh, each of the two, approximately 250 different uh, performance indicators. In addition to um, annually, we, we, we update all of our risk analysis annually. Um, it's a lot of work. There's no doubt about it. But um, we find a lot of benefit to being a credit, an accredited department. Many of the processes that we use to be accredited, we use um, in other areas and projects um, all the time. For example, um, last year's station optimization plan that, we, that we're con still working on is uh, all driven by uh, analysis that we learned through the accreditation process. So there's a lot of benefit to us. It's not just a plaque or not just a sticker. Um, it's, it's a lot of uh, performance analysis that we use every day. Any other questions for me? All right. Uh, and I like the accreditation problem process for many reasons, but included in that is the fact that they bring to our department uh, new ideas and best, best management practices from which we can select things even beyond uh, what's required for accreditation uh, if we think they will be of benefit to the city. But let's move on to uh, new technologies, which are always fun when they turn out to be uh, things that improve your system. What we want to talk about today is some new safety equipment that's been now installed, actually installed in two ambulances, uh, one of which is here today. Uh, the Stryker Power Load cot fastening system uh, increases safety for both patients and responders. It's an ergonomically designed, uh, ergonomically designed to reduce injuries to firefighters by hydraulically lifting patients, patients that can weigh up to 700 pounds and supporting the cot until the wheels are on the ground. The system is also the first in the US to meet dynamic crash test standards to improve the safety of occupants uh, of the ambulance. A third ambulance is scheduled to uh, have the system installed within the next 90 days. Funding for the power load systems is currently provided by the Federal Emergency Management Agency's Metropolitan Medical Response System. And more information on uh, LFR's installation is available on fire.lincoln.ne.gov. So with us today to, to give you more details and to, I think, show you how it works, mm -hmm. actually, is uh, Division Chief Roger Bonin. Uh, he's here to give you a little demonstration. Roger. Good morning. My name is Roger Bonin. I'm the Division Chief of EMS. I'd like to talk to you a little bit about the genesis behind this project. According to statistics printed in EMS1.com, 
one out of every four EMS providers will suffer a career ending injury within their first four years. Almost one out of every two providers will have a sustained back injury. So per the National Association of EMTs, 62% of injuries are caused by lifting and back strain. And of that, 78% of the compensation that's paid out is for lost, pro lost productivity because of a back injury. Most injuries occur as a result of cumulative stress and not just a one-time incident. So this device reduces cumulative stress a, a great deal. Here in Lincoln, our busy medic units run about 10 calls per day on average. So that means they unload and load this cot 20 times a day at a minimum. This is what cumulative stress occurs, how that how it happens. Lincoln Fire is proud to have two of these devices installed and the third one will be installed soon. Funding for this came from MMR, MMRS. We didn't spend any of the general fund budget or any of the enterprise fund for this. And our goal is to outfit our entire fleet with these devices over the next few years. It, it really makes a, a big difference. Well, people are becoming larger. Obesity is a, a problem across the nation. So this does help. Uh, when I started being a paramedic years ago, the average weight of a person was 230 pounds. It's up over 325 now. So you, know, you can tell how much difference that makes. And our uh, men and women out in the street, they're lifting that before these devices, they would lift that, hold that weight. And that's what causes that cumulative stress. No, the average weight across the nation is about 325 pounds. Mm -hmm. Just looked that up this morning. So, I think they would notice that it's a lot smoother. I think the paramedics and the EMTs that use it each day can tell you how gentle it is. You can barely feel it. And it makes their job a lot easier to load that patient. And there's not as much jerking when we lift patients. So if you have a fracture or something like that, it's more comfort for the patient. I wouldn't say it would be particularly helpful for one specific subset of injuries. I think it's general better patient care. The patients feel a smoother ride, they're lifted up. It's just, just a nicer lift than if it's done by hand. Not that we didn't do a good job before, but this, I think as you see it, you'll see how smooth it is. Well, we we see back injuries all the time, and this is one of the things that we're trying to do to alleviate those back injuries and make it safer for our providers in the field. Uh, the back injuries I were talking about were more for our providers rather than the, the people we pick up. I don't really know that I've, I've studied that. I mean, cardiac is a, is a big issue, cardiac type illnesses, shortness of breath, things like that are, are things we see every day. I don't have any specific numbers on what's the most common. Chief? Um, I, will, I will tell you that the uh, leading cause of firefighter injuries are slips, trips, and falls, and back related to lifting. And if you think about what a firefighter does, they work in an environment, uh, a fire incident where there's lots of uh, uh, maybe uneven surfaces and, of course, wet and icy and all those things. Slips and, and falls are pretty common. Uh, but lifting is, is becoming a very uh, uh, prevalent injury, unfortunately. And, un and unfortunately, they're also very costly. For the, for the employee in terms of a lost time and for the employer from the, in terms of having to replace that, that person and ultimately uh, pay for any medical care that's a result of that injury. So we're trying to minimize both. We're trying to reduce uh, injury frequency and injury costs, and we think this is a, a pretty good tool to help us get there. Okay, you all set?